despite what Jack was saying uh, about, the, about, about the Bible and, 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 and me, sometimes I have to admit the Bible can seem so outdated and so boring. I mean, have you ever heard someone uh, maybe reading up here, maybe you know, you're just, you've cracked it open yourself, and it seems like all it is is old rules and ancient traditions and first century assumptions, and it just sounds so bible especially the King James. Uh, and I hate it. I mean, I hate it. I mean, we, we try to find out God's word, God's point for my life, but sometimes, just what are they talking about? What is going on in there? If you think the Bible is ever tedious or irrelevant, say amen. You heretics. <laughs> but you're right, heretics. You're correct. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes we, we can work together to peel away some of those cultural differences that make it so confusing. We can study the languages or the history or the context. Um, sometimes, despite our first impressions reading it, maybe with a helpful translation, like you said, or, or an open attitude, sometimes we can find in Scripture something beautiful and true. But that takes work. It takes work. And wouldn't it be better if Jesus just came back and he told a lot of stories. Stories are great. The CEOs tell stories. Stories are great. But what if he updated his illustrations? I mean, wouldn't you pay more attention if Jesus told more stories about snow and stress headaches and less stories about sheep and Samaritans? Amen. Yeah, there's an amen. And, 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 and who is my neighbor? Well, there was this man in Vail. Every day there was a powder day. He let everyone else take the first lines every time. There's a parable for my life. My guess, um, faith can be so complicated, but my guess is that if Jesus was here today, and if Jesus wanted to connect with us, he'd probably talk more about computers and cars and less about candles and camels. He'd teach the same truth. I want to hold on to that. He'd teach the same truth, uh, but he might do it in some, some new ways. But then again, on the other hand, sometimes you open up the Bible, or you open up your Facebook and someone posted a verse right there, and it just speaks to you. That is exactly what I needed to hear right now. You ever have that where where you're in some kind of crisis and suddenly it's as though something is just talking right to you and it just bowls you over? And in those cases, to heck with modernization, to heck with progress. The old stories work just fine, thank you. Some of you, who likes books better than Kindle? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who likes classic cars better than all the fancy things we have today? Yeah, I knew there was. Uh, um, and if you were on a desert island with one CD, who would choose Frank Sinatra over Justin Bieber? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes the old things work. And, and, and Jesus, on one hand, is teaching ancient wisdom, uh, eternal wisdom that matters today, lessons that can change your life and sometimes you have to work for those lessons to resonate, which, eh, but other times it just jumps off the page, as though it was written 2,000 years later just for you. For instance, Jesus talked just about as much as anything about money. It's almost like Jesus knew we would struggle with money. Uh, and, and he tells us stories. He tells stories about cutthroat investment bankers. He tells stories about people who complain about their paycheck. Uh, Rich, he even tells a story about a guy who won't pay his rent, and he beats up everyone who comes to collect the rent. You should read that one. Um, he tells stories uh, over and over about taxes. Anyone do their taxes this week? Yeah. Does any, anyone do them correctly? I don't know. Maybe you probably did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is anyone's life here ever shaped, even a little bit, by the way Wall Street handles its business? Maybe it filters down to you. Um, Is is anyone want to raise in their life, or maybe not to pay the bills that they are always, that keep coming in? There's nothing irrelevant about those kinds of stories that Jesus tells. They resonate today. Another example of Jesus uh, talking in a way that we we can really get here and today. But we start a series for the next few weeks, all concerning what the Bible has to say about growing stuff, grain and grapes and flowers and cucumbers and radishes. Um, has anyone ever heard a sermon about radishes? Next week, I'm telling you, they can boost your faith and they can ruin a salad altogether, right there. Um, but yeah, this is, this is Earth Day Sunday where we celebrate creation care. But all the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about Farming and gardening and the things that come out of the ground. Um, Claudia, she, she has a greenhouse, so, so she probably knows a little bit about this. And Elizabeth, who, who's not here today, she, she, she used to have a ranch, so she probably knows some about this. But I presume most of us here are not experts on dirt. 
Most of us, I mean, we, we guard, you, you've gardened some, heck, some flowers, beautiful garden. In a few weeks, we'll be in your place for, for outdoor service. But all of us, somewhere, we know, we know enough to connect. You know which one of those, uh, the kids knew which one of those soils works best. You know that it takes water and soil and, and sun and attention and patience to grow a garden. You know you have to keep away the critters, whether it's deer or all kinds of different bugs. We all we get that. We don't have to be experts to get that much. And, and, and even if gardening seems boring to you, at least it's not confusing. At least it's not as confusing as like, ancient Near East politics. Jack and I have been talking a ton about ancient Near East politics and who comes and attacks who. That's pretty confusing stuff. Or the structure of Greek poetry. Anyone you know, an expert on that? That's pretty confusing stuff. And, but, but, but this, soil with plants, you might not know how to move from kind of this place in your life to where you want to get, but you can understand something about plants. And Jesus says, hey, faith, it's a little bit, it's kind of like if you were growing this plant and some things are really helpful and some things are really deadly. But, but Jesus, I've killed every plant I've ever had. And Jesus says, yeah, and if you pay attention, you might learn about how you sabotage any chance of an abundant life also. Oh, it works whether I'm a good gardener or a bad gardener. I can learn something about faith. Because Jesus knows that this concept of God and faith and church and religion and all that stuff is huge. It's big, it's hard, and your, your relation... Some of us aren't even on board with the idea of just God as a thing that we relate to. That's fine. Whatever it is to have a relationship with your journey of faith, whatever that is, can be heavy stuff. So Jesus' strategy with these stories is to take little steps so we can pick up what we can on the things that do make sense, and then we can work our way closer to the kind of person we want to be and the kind of life that we want. That's Jesus' goal, the kind of person that we really in our deepest soul want to be and the kind of life that, that God wants for us. So with the parable of the sower, uh, the planter, the parable with the seeds and the soil, first of all, it, we're going to go through the, the, these different soils here. If you are here at all, if you're sitting in these pews listening online, at some level you are probably open to, to, to planting some kind of new truth into your heart. Is there, there's some openness, uh, unless you've lost a bet, or your wife just demands that you come here, uh, or you sleep on the couch, then you're probably here a little bit open for God to speak to you in some way. Uh, even if you're not on board with God, you know, there's, you're willing to soften up some of your heart and receive some seeds uh, for your life. I- except, that might be true generally, even for all of us, Except that when you hear something that, you, that I say that you agree with, yeah, all right, that's the kind of truth I like. That's why I come to church. Hanson said something I agree with. Plant that buddy right here. Or when you hear a truth I say that, that, that might be a challenge to those people, that's good stuff. Plant that seed in their hearts over there, that challenge and stuff. That's, that's great. But what about when God has a problem with that one pesky little thing in your life? That... What about when you hear some challenge to the way you do relationships, or the way you use your money, or, the, or your addictions, your sex life, your politics, your attitude? What then? We all have something in our life where we are reluctant to change. And if anyone wants to go there, me, God, whoever, no. Nah. No. If God says anything, you know, big guy, I know you're uh, looking out for me. I know you have a better way for the world. But uh, the thing about my life is, it's my life. My life. And, and, and maybe all of us have some place in our world where we are hard soil. And that, that's okay. Jesus didn't say in this parable, did not say, I didn't hear any shovels. I didn't hear any tractors. Didn't say anywhere where God forces the seed into us. This is your life. You can live with concrete, uh, hard rocks over any part of your heart that you want. But if... When it comes to that thing that haunts you, when it comes to the things where it just gets sensitive when anyone even brings them up, if it's just too offensive to imagine letting God help you grow in some area, you know what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. It's just going to be you and your hard soil. But if you till your soil, if you work your soil, if you renew your spirit, 
If you give God even a little bit of room to plant some truth that could enrich your life, even just the smallest crack, you know what could happen? Drive down the canyon, look at the way pine trees live on the rocks. It doesn't take much to plant a seed in a little crack, and that can grow. But what if? What if, sure, you start to follow, let's move on to the next soil. You start to follow this new way of approaching life. You're open to even trying new ways of of doing life and living. Maybe you even see a few results. You start to see things happen. But what if it just gets too hard? It's not exciting. Your growth maybe slows down. You don't see the results coming as fast. You realize through this process, actually, I have some hard questions about this. And if I can't answer those questions right away, what are you going to do? I mean, part of you does, in fact, genuinely want to blossom into a full and abundant person, full and abundant life. But that takes work. It takes commitment. It takes trust. And all of us only have so much time. I've been burned before in kind of spiritual paths. This whole thing about, uh, about living and loving differently than the rest of the world eh, seems a little suspicious. I don't want people to think I'm one of those Christians. And frankly, this is one I hear a lot. Isn't a little bit of faith better than nothing? Isn't that better? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I wish I could agree. I, I kind of, I hope I can agree. Um, but I, I wish I could tell you that uh, God says, once you believe in God, well, there you go. You jump into the next level, and everything else is just that icing on the cake. Great. I wish I could say that just just accepting something about following God is done. Game over. The rest of it, you're just having fun with God. But that's not the story that I read over and over in Scripture. The story I read is that um, once you let God in, that's the point where the effort and the commitment and the trust actually starts to matter. Once you plant that seed, you want it to grow. You plant it because you want it to grow into a meaningful life. And now you have something to take care of. Now you have this project called you. And when you're really ready to cultivate becoming the best person you can be, that's when you start to clear away the pride. That's when you start to dig away the judgment. That's when you start to add a little compassion. That's when you follow some spiritual practices. Things like like, like reading the Bible or going to church, serving other people. Wait, wait, wait. Is Hanson telling you that if you want to grow closer to God, you should read the Bible and pray and go to church and serve other people? No. Hanson's not telling you that at all. God is. She was was nodding, thinking it was me. No, I got you on that one. No. Uh, God says that. And and don't hear that that wrong, because um, uh, those sorts of disciplines are not a rule where if you do them, you win and God harvests you into some eternal salvation. And if you don't do them, you lose and you literally wither up and die. That message, 2,000 years ago, a lot of people used to preach that and live that way and talk that way and they beat people over the head with that. You know what Jesus did with that message? He argued nonstop against it. Nonstop against that idea that faith is some equation, yes, no, and win or lose. Uh, they, 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 those people thought the world worked that way with rules about belief and behavior and belonging. And if you follow them, blessed. And if you fail at them, you might as well be just compost. Uh, but Jesus argued against that notion so bitterly. It was so important for him so that, that, that we don't misunderstand that that he ended up um, dying on a cross. It was so important. He wouldn't let that poison us and our soil. And on the other side, he urged people all the time, helped them and taught them to use those kinds of practices. And he promised, he promised that if you do those things, you'll be good soil for God to plant something in. That's the start. He urged people, if you're good soil, you can change the world. So study and spirituality and worship and mission, none of that saves you. But all of it makes you a better conduit for God to grow something wonderful. But what if I'm growing and I'm committed? Here I am just growing my little shoot up here. I got leaves. I'm I'm working with people. I'm healing people. I trust that God is looking out after me. And I'm on a path. But what happens when life just takes over, puts me in the shadows? Yeah, what, what about, that's the third one. What about worry and anger and fear and attachment and stuff? 
What about the stuff and the power and the acceptance that we all strive? That can choke the development that we're making, and it can stunt any progress we have as people, as spiritual beings, whatever. Does God really expect us to handle growth on the inside and manage the difficulty of life on the outside? It sure sounds like the path to a renewed spirit and better life is hard, and it's hard because it matters. It's hard because you have a worthwhile goal, project, you. And what is the goal? Well, it's to be good soil. Jesus says, all means, uh, the work you put in to cultivate God's truth in your life, all that work will bear fruit abundantly. And what does that mean, to bear fruit? The way he says it is 30 or 60 or 100 full, 100 times. I don't, I don't know that, that that all of a sudden gets past me on farming. I don't know what kind of, what kind of return we're supposed to have. My sense is if I'm working really hard and, and anything is happening in my life that seems like it's from God, I'm a pretty happy camper. I mean, any given day that I leave this church and it seems like God is doing something through this people, I'm happy. What would it be like if that was 100-fold the work that we put in God uses for good? Maybe it'll mean you're going to be a good influence on the world. Maybe you'll make a, 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 just some difference in your field at work. Maybe it means God's love will shine through you in powerful ways and that you will have real joy far beyond any mere entertainment that our world normally goes in for. I, I don't know. For all of us, it could be something different. But it sounds like an impressive life, something rich and fulfilling. It sounds like a seed worth planting and a garden worth tilling. It sounds like a life worth living for. Amen. Thank you.